what is the clinical trials information system in Europe? This is a system where its use became mandatory for new clinical trial applications in the EU. So from January 2023, all initial clinical trials applications in the European Union must be submitted via the clinical trials information systems. And by, uh, again, uh, I would say over a three years period from 2022 to 2025, all of the information will be available on CTIS. This system is obviously uh, um, replacing the previous system that we had that was a European online gateway in order to submit the uh, information. And of course, not just for clinical trials, but also for uh, different types of submissions. Let's look into uh, one interface of uh, CTIS uh, search result. You can always look into uh, the search for clinical studies here, where you can then look into searching for clinical trials, and then you will be able to use, um, again, um, different boxes where you can able you are able to search by trial, by uh, term used in the clinical trials. And then here I'm just showing you one example. So here we are looking into the summary of a clinical trial that we can see on CTIS. Members states concerned are uh, these countries. Now the population type, it, they didn't say, they should usually say if it's are adults, if these are pediatric population, if they're having, if these are any special population. But anyways, this is, an, to me, it's an error that must be again corrected, but definitely uh, the sponsor is going to take it into account. Now, uh, you can also see here that for this trial uh, that was at last updated in November 2023, this has been approved in Poland, Spain, Italy, Germany, and uh, uh, Czechia. So this authorized at different dates. So the study did start in all of these countries on a, again, after this date of authorization. Now we can also look into the full trial information where we can see the trial details. <clears throat> Here we can look into the fact that and as you know very well, since we have several uh, languages in the European Union, all of the protocols in form consent forms, any document that is <clears throat> being exposed to subjects, study subjects, they must be translated. This is why this protocol, for example, has translations in Czech, in Spanish, Italian, in Polish, and in German. Very interesting to have five translations of the same protocol and of course all of the information that we give to patients then uh, you have the public title again they are different because these are translations of the uh, study title and then uh, you do have now more information about the trial itself so here as you see you have the cover letter and you can open and read it. You see how public information is important. And now you see that you can again have the access to the uh, <coughs> cover letter from this, uh, um, again, company in the PDF format. You also have the document that we have to complete and submit again with your CTA application, which is compliance with data privacy. You also have this already public, published and public now. Then we also look into the medical condition for which the drug has been approved to be tested through the CTA in Europe. And again here, uh, in Polish, of course, we just say that this condition in other countries is as is, but in Polish, it must be translated. Then we talk about what we are going to do, the objective 
is to test the study for the safety and efficacy of the drug. And then we talk about the objective. And then here we see that we also have translations of the objectives. This is one of the characteristics of, uh, again, um, uh, studies in Europe. Then we have secondary objectives. So the first objective is usually safety. And the secondary objective may be efficacy or it may be effect on a specific population. You can have, you can have or add <clears throat> several objectives as well for your study. Now we look into the eligibility criteria, which patients can be in the study, which patients should be out of the study for safety reasons for now. So here, you have information about uh, the eligibility criteria that is coming from the study protocol. Then we also have <clears throat> a section for the endpoints. We have the primary endpoints, secondary endpoints, and I saw studies where we have several endpoints. This means that we have several research hypotheses, but we are looking into testing those research hypotheses uh, in the same study. So the first endpoint for this study is the change from baseline at week 24, where we are looking into if this change is going to affect the efficacy of this drug. And then we have secondary endpoints. We are going to look into Again, other changes that are going to allow us to look into any change in the uh, efficacy and or safety of the drug. Then uh, we are looking into the estimated recruitment time and when estimated end of the trial. So this trial uh, should have started on 27th of October 2023. And we count, I mean, the sponsor is expecting to finish it in 2026. And since this is a global trial for EU, you're looking into again 2026 for getting the study reports from all of the member states. We have five for here. Then we look into the population of trial subjects where we say that, OK, these are 65 plus years. 18 to 64 as well. The age range for secondary identifier is against 65 to 84 and 85 plus. So we are looking into getting the age of our subjects because we would like also to test the product in different, I would say, um, ages. So it's uh, 18 to 64, 65 plus, but within 65 plus population, we are going to look into effect of the drug in 65 to 84 uh, and 84 plus subjects. Now we also look, down, look at the male and uh, female subjects. We talk about genetically male and female subjects <coughs> where we include both. Now the trial group is again the patient and we are not dealing with any vulnerable population. Uh, it may be elderly people who may need some uh, someone again to take care of them. It may be people with mental disorders. Uh, these are vulnerable population. Then we have the protocol information. And again, as you see, you can access to the protocol by clicking on the link. What is again interesting in Europe is that in the CTIS system, we are dealing with several countries, several languages as well. So you may see a protocol in different languages. And those protocols are, of course, here and they are public. Again, if you're looking into the study summary report, um, the study summary report must be added into the system and become public maximum 30 days after getting the marketing authorization from the EU for a product in any European country or European market. Now you also see that you have subject questionnaire. These are questions that you're asking from people. This is like 
case report forms. It means that each time that the patient comes to the, uh, uh, again, um, research center or hospital or a medical office, it can be any of these uh, health care uh, settings. We will also go over <clears throat> the results. We may ask the patient to, uh, again, give a blood sample, to have a test, blood test, urine test, any type of biopsy related to the study, of course, the protocol. And then we are going to gather the data. We can also have interviews with the patient. We can also go over several tests um, um, that are mental, for example, related uh, mental health related tests as well, depending on the, the drug or the study. And then we are going to add all of this information into uh, the data collection sheets for each study, for each visit. And those data collection sheets, we call them case report forms. And here, we are talking about subject questionnaires as well. So these are questions based on the protocol that we need to ask from subjects. And of course, in each country, you are going to need to have a specific protocol and a specific subject questionnaire in um, the language of the country. Now, we also have access to the synopsis of the protocol. This is a <clears throat> shorter version of the study protocol. It also needs to be public. We also have another information about the study design. Is it a double blinded or simple blinded study where uh, no participants, no experimentators are able to see whether the subject is taking the placebo or the active drug? Or is it a simple blinded or, sim or uh, um, uh, I would say a simple masked <clears throat> or one sided masked uh, uh, study where only the uh, subject may not know, I mean, doesn't know, I mean, they don't know uh, if they are taking the drug or the placebo. These are all different ways to uh, remove bias from the results of the clinical trials. We also have a section for scientific advice on pediatric investigational plan. This is because, um, as uh, we all know, the pharmacology in the pediatric population is not the same as in adult population. Even the pharmacology in the adult population may not be the same for the elderly population. It means that the uh, ab absorption, the distribution, the, um, um, again, metabolization and the excretion and the extent on each of these, uh, again, processes in the body may change and does change based on the age, based on the disease conditions, based on several conditions that may even be the temperature. It may be, again, the stress level as well, as we know very well that uh, we are going, again, our pharmacological, I would say, um, um, characteristics. They are not changing at 100%, but they may be modified to some extent. We may have, for example, people at the age of 45, they don't metabolize enough well the, 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 the nicotine uh, or alcohol or, for example, coffee or caffeine. And then we will see that if they, these people, after a certain age, they take caffeine, they're going to have a higher blood pressure because of the ingestion of caffeine. So we have, we know about these uh, changes, of course, uh, I would say in the pharmaco logic um, in the in different um, uh, populations. So here we're talking about the pediatric because we would like to, again, know that, I mean, make sure that sponsors, they also understand that they're aware of the fact that the pharmacology for different drugs may not be the same in the, again, the pediatric population. Hence, we need to have an investigational plan that is well adapted with the pharmacology of the pediatric population. Then we have another section, uh, which is about the associated clinical trials, where we can, of course, uh, look into the references, if there's any other clinical trial in the country or in other country as well. Now, we can also talk about other countries, again, uh, uh, where we are testing the drug. And here we see that we have Canada, Georgia, and United States. So what is interesting is that now that you know about this study, you can always go to clinicaltrials.gov, which is the FDA um, repository and registry system for the clinical trials, which is also mandatory. 
uh, to register your trials in the US if you, of course, uh, uh, do your studies in the US. So we can always find the same information, not with the same template, of course, but with the same content, maybe less or more, but uh, the similar content on clinicaltrials.gov. We also have a section for the sponsors. We have to, of course, uh, uh, tell uh, the, the, again the CTIS ad in the CTIS who is the sponsor. We also look into or talking about the uh, products. So here this is a botulinum tox toxin type 8. Oh, it's like Botox, of course. Uh, this is it. So are they authorized? We look into the fact that yes, they are. Now we also have the investigators brochure, very important document that we also need to add into the CTA application. We also have um, the SMPC or the summary of product characteristics that we need to put into our CTA. So when you see here the application for the CTA for the study, you see that all of this information have been already submitted by the sponsor within the uh, um, again um, the, the uh, CTA package using the ECTD uh, structure. That we're going to see, of course, after uh, presenting uh, this, uh, um, I would say, this content. Then uh, we also have compliance uh, with GMP, where we need to uh, complete the file uh, form, which is again the, uh, um, again, um, it, it is the template for that in the CTIS. When we complete that, we also, this is attestation for the sponsor to say that yes, we are going to uh, commit into uh, following the good manufacturing practices as per ICHQ7. Then we also have an authorization number of manufacturing and import that we need to complete. Then we have the investigational medicinal pro product dossier for the quality. We are going to, of course, add the information. And then we have also uh, another IMPD section for the safety and efficacy. And again, this is a document that the sponsor is completing and adding that into the ECTD uh, structure for the EU or European Union clinical trial application. Now, we also have a section for the role of the placebo, if it's applicable, this is not the case for this study. So we also have, you see that, okay, this is a confidential information about the placebo. As you see, this is a trade secret. The company, they don't need to put their trade secret here as long as we have the summary report and then the full clinical summary reports uh, 30 days after uh, this product being on the market. Then we also have other linked profile, uh, linked uh, products. Again, these are just Botoxes. And then uh, consent, uh, con sorry, content of the label. We have again the content of label in different languages. We are in Europe, so we have different languages and these are all translated. So it's very interesting to see that the label okay, here uh, is also in different languages. Then we have again the different documents that are being given to us. So we have the cover letter, the product main English clinical trials, the subject uh, again, uh, diary in English, etc, etc. So these are all of the documents that you add into your ECTD application. Okay. Now you understand that uh, when you are having uh, again this type of job to prepare the forms, the attestations, and the documents, you necessarily need to go to the, uh, uh, I would say, the uh, uh, country's uh, regulatory authority website you necessarily need to read their regulations and guidance documents. You also need to use their templates. They are asking you to fill out forms, preparing some documents, and to write some summary reports or characteristics of your drug, where you have to follow a specific template. If not, they will not accept it. If not, accepted, your application is going to be refused or delayed. And this delay or refusal is not something that we can accept on the company side because we need to in, we need to invest and to get the profit and to expand the business 
and of course to do more studies and to give better products to the market. This is where we look into you as a professional. This is where we look into you as someone who is smart enough and committed enough to provide a quality work. And the quality work, as you see, this is here, you have the cover letter, you have the protocols, you have synopsis of the protocol, you have the summary of advices, investigators brochure, they're all information that are available, but they have been all sent, prepared, and submitted through the CTA application the first time. Hence, it was approved the first time. Hence, we didn't delay any uh, study. And those delays are not one or two days. It may be a delay after delay after delay with consequences where we may end up not being on the market before our competitor. This is why we need to work smart. We also need to work hard, but first work smart, learn how to go to these uh, websites to search for the forms, get the information, complete them perfectly, use the templates that are given to you by your company SOPs or by regulatory authorities, and then to provide the quality work so that we don't experience any delay for uh, approval of the study or for, for example, uh, I would say again, going even sending to the market our product as well. Okay, so you see now how it's very important to have access to these databases. And when we again um, are again um, asking you a job, to do a job, you need to learn how to use the database, getting into some again, getting some examples. And as you say here, for example, if we ask you to uh, prepare for a proof of payment, you just come here and you just look into a proof of payment of another country where it was submitted in another application. So here in for, for the in the CTIS, you already have access look to all of these documents that are public and that are all made by companies in order to um, again submit their uh, CTA. So for you, you just need to say, OK, I'm having this. My, I have my protocol, my study information, my risk management strategies, my again, uh, informed consent, for example, and then you can just look into how it has been done. OK, and then it, it's, an, it's an example and then you can also do a better job. So you have access to all of these different documents. And don't forget, we don't call that cheating. It, this is here for the purpose of being used as a model for new companies for new drugs as well. OK, so you feel free to come to these databases, feel free to copy all of the information, use them in order to do a better job for you because your drug may not be the same. It may be the same. It's OK, but if it's not the same, it, no problem neither. You are able to read an example and then to um, complete uh, again another form similar form but for a different drug now of course you can also look into part two um, documents these are country specific documents so let me go over uh, check okay here they may be uh, they may not be in in english of course but just going over the subject we have 140 uh, subjects in the uh, again chechia here we are having again um, different uh, different sites and you have information about everyone in those sites, doctor, their email, their address, their phone number, everything must be public and it's there. Now we also have documents, recruitment documents, and again, look, you can even uh, download them. They are in check, of course, and then you have the proof of payment, you have the proof of insurance, you have the financial and other arrangement, you see the of the facilities, uh, again, investigators, so suitability, subject information, all of this information already available to be downloaded, but of course to be used in order to create your own uh, European Union clinical trial application in a CTD format. So uh, the same thing applies to Germany, Italy, Spain, and Poland. So now that we looked into uh, 
again, uh, the, uh, um, I would say the uh, CTIS. I would like to tell you also that you can also uh, look into, uh, again, uh, other information in their website as well. You can also log in to the system. And then if you are a work since a sponsor, you can now submit your work. If you are an authority work, again, authority staff, then you can go in and you will have different interfaces in order to review the, EC, the, the, the CTA applications and then to, uh, again, approve or disapprove, but it's a work uh, that is done by a group of reviewers in order to review the CTA. But again, this is an interface where uh, I would say authority uh, representatives and sponsors can work again on the same platform. Now, uh, I already told you that the use of the clinical trial information system becomes mandatory for new clinical trial applications as of, uh, again, January 2023. And uh, we are planning to, of course, have all of the studies in, the, in Europe to be, uh, again, um, um, to be uh, uh, registered in this interface up, uh, by 2025. Now you may say, what are those documents exactly? We already saw those documents, uh, and uh, I just, I didn't open them, I just showed them to you. In the next, uh, I would say, um, uh, slides, I mean, here as well, I'm just going to tell you what are the uh, summary of what you need for the documents to prepare your CTA in Europe. Part one is the application form that you will have to fill out. So the application form usually is like your form HSC uh, 3011 for Health Canada. It takes about uh, maximum one hour, maximum, if you have, if you dispose all of the documents that you have. The time that we need in order to get going back and forth with communications to get the, the information that we put in the uh, forms is usually much longer than the time necessary just to add the information into the form. Uh, then we also talk about, I mean, write the cover letter and the justification of the, for the class, uh, classification as a low intervention um, a clinical trial if necessary. We also add the investigator's brochure that is being written based on European Union, European Medicinal Agency templates. We also need to have the good documentation practice for the premise so we need to have a certificate of the of, of compliance for our uh, manufacturing facilities for good manufacturing practice. We also need to have an investigational ministerial product dossier, IMPD, where we are adding the information about the study. We need also to put the scientific advice if applicable. We need to have a European Union pediatric investigational plan decision in case our trial is including the pediatric population. We need to have an example investigational and auxiliary medicinal product labeling because when we are going to use our product in clinical trials, sites need to have an investigator's brochure or a label which is a document where we are having all of the information necessary for knowing about the efficacy and safety and the quality of the product. Part one was for general uh, application. Now part two, that was a section where we have to, again, translate and add information for each specific European country in which we are going to conduct our clinical trial. This means that for part two, you have to, if you have six countries, you will have to create six part two sections, and each of the sections must be translated into the country where you are going to, um, again, uh, do your clinical trials. Now here we have the informed consent and subject information leaflet in the language of the country. Uh, then uh, we talk about, I mean, we have a document for the compensation arrangements. This is based on the IRB or ethics board approval of how much we compensate our patients to come to each visit. 
Then we also have another form for the suitability of investigators and facilities that we are going to, of course, complete and add into our part two uh, documents. We also need to have a proof of interest or indemnification uh, in case the country where patients are having, for example, they may not have 100 percent coverage for their uh, medical expenses. We also have to add the data protection rules as per the uh, country's uh, uh, regulations, like in Canada, for example, we have the, uh, the protection of the uh, 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 private information of people. OK, we have uh, uh, PIPEDA, for example, again, protection of the uh, pro I would say personal information in Canada. So in different countries, we have similar laws and rules, but they may not be called the same. Always for the protection of your privacy and for the data, which is also your privacy. And of course, precise content will be determined by each member state as well. So this is in a nutshell what you have to add into your uh, clinical trial application for Europe. But of course, it goes beyond that. You have much more higher number of uh, uh, again, uh, documents. But uh, in a nutshell, again, these are part one and part two. Now, overall, if you would like to just uh, make it uh, simple to explain. You have, uh, and again, this is where, again, you see the MSC is uh, the member state consent, okay, MSC. Uh, CTIS is the clinical trial information uh, system that contains two sections. One is the form and one is, uh, or I would say part one and part two, Part one is about the forms. Part two is about the information that you are going to send to each, uh, again, concerned uh, state member. Uh, again, if you would like to do your study in five countries, part two is uh, has to be done or redone for each country with their own language. So here we talk about the cover letter for uh, part one, talking about the proof of payment for the services and, of course, for the compliance with regulations. Uh, then for the part two, which is for the MSC, we, are, we already covered that in the previous uh, web page that I showed you. We're just going to go over uh, the, uh, um, um, I would say the documents that we have to prepare.